Hello there. It's uh, Fridays with Father. Uh, Friday, September the 29th, 2023. And I'm speaking to you today, not from my usual office, um, but from a hotel room in, uh, on the island of Mallorca. Um, I arrived here yesterday. Uh, took a bit of an effort to get here. Um, but I arrived with my parents and uh, today I'm celebrating uh, the wedding, the marriage of my niece. And um, so it's sort of a festive time. Um, I'm trying to get myself focused, uh, ready for this afternoon at four o'clock in the Church of St. Nicholas, which is close by. Um, so it'll be a different experience for me. I have done a, a wedding once before in Spain uh, for a classmate of mine, um, but uh, this is the very first time I've been on this island of Mallorca and it's very, very beautiful. Um, we got here yesterday afternoon and then last night there was like, um, how would you say it? I want to say a rehearsal dinner, but I don't think there was a rehearsal. Um, I suppose like a, a wedding warm-up party and it was in a very beautiful place um, overlooking the sea. Um, and it was, uh, yeah, kind of like a, a venue, I think, uh, on a little sort of um, sort of cliff at looking over the Mediterranean. So uh, I gathered there with uh, my family and and a lot of other people I didn't know because that's how weddings go, right? And um, and so it was it was nice. It was nice, you know. So um, throughout it all, of course, I was thinking about today because I have to be on. I have to sort of, um, in some ways, perform. This is like a work, <laughs> a work event for me. Um, just trying to think, well, what am I going to say? You know, what am I going to say to these people? And possibly that's one of the most difficult things about, uh, at least for me anyway, being a priest and uh, getting to officiate in, in these moments. Uh, and you have to say something, you know, you have to preach and, and, and finding the right words takes a bit of preparation and, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So when I was uh, at the party last night with all these different people who, you know, many of which were not Catholic, I'd say the majority of which do not practice any particular faith or religion. And so I'm surveying the crowd thinking, what can I say to these people in some ways to, to, to touch, you know, their, their soul in such a way? as that they might look towards God, which is the purpose of, of any kind of preaching moment, I suppose. Uh, and it was interesting because I was, I was talking and listening to a variety of different people. And, and so I'm, as I'm listening and talking, I'm, so I'm listening for or looking for kind of signs, if you like, signs of faith in the life of the person um, or openness to it. So even like, so one person in conversation just said the word blessing, you know, and I thought, hmm. That's kind of interesting. So there's like an instinct there that in some ways they're looking beyond themselves and they acknowledge that um, not everything they have is, is what they've gotten for themselves. So that's where I'm at right now. So uh, pardon my kind of like um, sort of lack of preparation, if you like, but I'm, I suppose I'm in that mode right now where, where like even for a Sunday, I'm preparing for the moment on a Sunday when I have to stand before everybody else and I have to to preach the Word of God I have to think of something which speaks well of the faith and brings Jesus into the sort of uh, sight line of the person and and maybe brings them closer to God so um, weddings are a great opportunity for that uh, but weddings are notoriously difficult um, because as you know with weddings there's like a million other things going on you know there's the dress and there's the flowers and there's the flower girls and you know it's a big production and then in the middle of it all then is is the priest who has to like sort of preside and direct but then look for that opportunity you know just look for that opportunity to to say to the couple who are getting married you know um something which they will remember um in 10 years time or or even longer 25 years time um, because it's an important moment um so what do i want to say to my my niece and and his and her boyfriend um well when it comes to like preaching uh, in general terms you know really liturgical preaching in the catholic church you always have to start from the word of god so the reading selections are, are really important um so like in terms of the readings that they choose 
Um, they, they tend to choose one or two, like an Old Testament and a New Testament sometimes. And then the priest gets to choose a gospel, usually. Um, and like they say, the top three readings that they choose, are, first of all, um, the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 13, the first letter, um, talking about love, you know, if, if I don't have, you know, kindness or patience, etc., etc., uh, what you know the greatest kind of reading about what love is they often choose that that's number one I think the second one was like the Old Testament reading from Genesis when they choose about you know Adam and Eve coming together and, and man and woman join and become one that's a very popular one amongst uh, amongst couples getting married and then third the other popular one would be um, a reading from the book of Song of Songs um, which is like a great poem really and uh, an ode, if you like, to love, how it describes love as a gazelle who arrives at the window looking at at its lover. You know, it's a beautiful, beautiful poem. So they always choose one of these. And so, like for today, they've chosen St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. And and um, I, I don't know who's doing that reading, but I'll, I'll try and make sure they do it well. And then um, the gospel reading that I have chosen, or it seems to be most appropriate really, is the wedding feast at Cana because it tells a story. Um, and so so when I'm preparing for these things, you always have to start from the, the word of God, really. Um, what is Jesus saying in the gospel? What is God saying through, you know, St. Paul, etc., etc.? Uh, and then from there, you know, you start to look, you start to survey if you like, the pastoral scene or the people who are there. Um, what would be, you know, what do they have in common? Um, what are some kind of particular objects or um, stumbling blocks in, in the things I might say? You know, so, you know, it's like with a group of young people, you, you're not going to sort of preach over their heads. You try and sort of maybe just cling on to something which maybe they they recognize or hold in common and um, and use that as something to sort of uh, hang on to um, as, as you try and bring Jesus into the picture for them. So uh, as I've been uh, pondering all of this and, and uh, you know, and most importantly, praying about this, because the the work of preaching really is a is a prayer kind of action, um, I, I'm, I'm sort of trying to find just that one little thing, if you like, that might make some difference in the lives of these young people. Uh, and as I, as I ponder the, the story of the wedding feast of Cana, you know, um, I'm thinking of, <laughs> thinking of these young people. And the, the thing that probably stands out most of all in that story is the fact that Jesus changed his water into wine, you know, and, um, and, and I've lived with many, many jokes um, made to me as a priest about, hey, Father, you're going to go and change that water into wine for us. You know, ha, 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 ha. Um, there, there's always the focus on the wine, you know, and how, you know, it's, it's a kind of a marvelous thing, I suppose, that Jesus did. Um, but, but for me, you see, that story, the more important thing is, is the intervention for Jesus, you know, how he, he steps in. And he makes something which was good and lovely into something that was brilliant, you know. Um, as, as the gospel says, it wasn't just any old wine, but it was the best of wine that was produced. And I think that, for me anyway, is the real importance of the wedding feast of Cana story. And so, you know, I'm going to try and sort of, I say to my, my niece and, and, you know, her boyfriend is really that... Um, that they're getting married in, and really that um, Jesus has to be a part of this. You know, then if, if, if there's anything they can really take away and hang on to uh, from these days of celebration is to know that this life that they're beginning together now, that, that Jesus uh, is a part of it and wants to be a part of it with them every step of the way. And to the extent that they, how should I say, sort of... Um, include him you know in their daily lives um the 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 best of experiences and the most marvelous of wine <laughs> if you like um will be will be given you know um uh, in 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 hundredfold 
Um, that's the kind of thing I'm trying to say. So as you can see, it's all a bit raw at the moment, but by the time four o'clock comes, I'll hope, hopefully, I'll have managed to like hang on to some phrase um, which I can like throw in their direction, which might resonate with them. So, um, but that's, as I say, it's a work in progress. And that's what my work is today. Um, I'm fairly soon going to go and have some breakfast with my mum and dad and maybe take a little walk, um, but then try and focus on the, on, on the, the work of the day. That's, that's what my, my life is. Uh, I do find weddings challenging because I know there are many, many distractions um, because I know it, it is in some ways all about the bride and the groom um, and and that's important. I'm only just there to witness but my role is to try and to to bring Jesus into the picture um, and I think there's a broader lesson there for all of us you know that um, Jesus needs to be in the picture. He wants to be in the picture um, and to the extent that we do that then our lives will flow and and produce wonderful results um wonderful spiritual results and very deep relationships you know uh, if we just remain at the shallow then really that's all we'll get is shallow when jesus involved is involved as in the marriage feast of cana then wonderful things happen so that's where i am um and i will be telling you more about it uh, once it's over and uh and I'm sure it'll be a lovely experience. Um, you know, I, I take my role in all of this very seriously, you know, um, because it is my life. But I also recognize that, you know, that that there's there's far more important things going on than, than just what I do, really. Um, God is at work in all of this. And, um, and I hope and pray, really, that uh, the good people who have gathered... Uh, will encounter Jesus in some way in the coming hours and days. Anyway, I hope all is well for you. I, I will not be um, back in time this weekend to to celebrate Mass at Church of the Holy Spirit St. Marceline, but I will be back with you for next Friday and for some more Fridays with Father and our very first Holy Hour um, at the St. Marceline campus at 6.30, and I hope you'll join us for that. In the meantime, it's time for me to go and get some food, uh, have some more coffee and ready for the day. Please pray for me uh, as I pray for you. And, uh, oh, I didn't mention, Jude is not here, right? He didn't come with. Um, yeah, I'm lucky to be able to travel because my, my housekeeper slash dog sitter will take care of Jude. So uh, Jude is uh, with Dahlia and I believe he's doing fine. And, um, and today is Dahlia's birthday, so happy birthday, Dahlia, and thank you for everything you do. Um, time for breakfast. Be joyful. Keep the faith.